Good evening, friends, and welcome to the fifth live presentation and webinar which I am going to do today. Uh, I hope that all of you are fine in this uh, situation which is uh, engulfed the whole world. And today's topic is denominations of the World Bank notes. And I will now start the presentations. Uh, denominations, <coughs> uh, a little about me, uh, I am a self-employed uh, in based in Bombay. Uh, as a hobby, I have numismatic wherein I collect the banknotes and earlier I used to even collect coins. I started this hobby sometime in 2013. As in today, I am members of various uh, banknotes groups. Sorry, there is a little uh, problem in the. <sighs> Sorry. Uh... I would uh, start the presentation again. The uh, topic today is denominations of World Bank notes. A little about me. Uh, I am uh, an entrepreneur and self-employed based in Bombay in India. Uh, I am as a hobby start uh, in 2013, started collecting banknotes and coins. Today, basically, I concentrate more on the banknotes. Um, as in today, I'm members of various banknote uh, groups and societies like IBNS, IBNS, IBC, THC, OFB, Collecting History, and many others. Uh, the Hobby Club, which is conducting these news uh, series, is a group of around 60 collectors who we meet and we get along to support each other on various hobbies of uh, each other's and help on the collection as well as the knowledge building. This series is basically been started by this group for imparting knowledge on various hobbies which the uh, different collectors have in this group. Uh, the collection which I have, basically I started the uh, Republic banknotes, which are banknotes after the independence, then also started adding the British India banknotes and expanded to the private banks, which is before the uh, British India banknotes. Uh, and subsequently started doing the world banknotes. Today's present themes which I have is the following which is hyperinflation banknotes overprint banknotes or denomination banknotes i have notes and coins on various uh, odd materials like silk jute uh, etc then uncut sheets pre-1900 and uh, private banknotes uh for live a webinar has been done by me till today. Uh, the viewership has been mentioned here. Uh, this has been spanned from 16th May 2020 is when we st started doing these uh, webinars. And today is the fifth one which I would be doing. Uh, till today, during the process of my collections, I have had displays where I have displayed my collection for other collectors and non-collectors to have a view and get an idea about the various banknotes which are available around the world. 
on the themes which I have. I have been also awarded certain uh, awards uh, till today during the process for the various uh, collections which I have been done and the support which I have given to the uh, numismatic uh, field. Uh, I have also authored a, a book on the hyperinflation banknotes and also conducted presentations on these topics at various forums. Hmm. Denomination. Denomination, if you see as a definition, refers to the financial doc instruments face values which could be financial instruments could be currency notes coins securities bonds other investments also when you term you deal with currency or money denomination is the individual value of the currency it is very important that the denomination wise demand of currency is being evaluated and known properly to the central bank uh, so that the uh, payment management or the payment requirements in a large economy or any economy can be managed very nicely. Uh, in case a certain shortage happens on a particular denomination, for example, if uh, in India, if 10 rupee notes is run short or 5 rupees notes are run short, it becomes very difficult at times to finish transactions and it hampers the economy. Uh, denomination distributions. Now, if you see small denomination notes, these do not depend on the income groups. As the lower income, middle income, or higher income groups all would like to keep the small denomination which they would use as change to do any cash transactions which they want. When it comes to the large denomination banknotes, it is normally more towards the higher income groups. The lower income groups perhaps may not even have seen those banknotes. Now, also the denomination which an uh, individual may have depends on the usage or, or whether it is for use or for storage. For example, if it is for use or if you are going for shopping or you are going for uh, 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 doing some expenses, you are going to have a spread of the denomination, right, from smaller denominations to the uh, large denominations. Uh, but when it comes to storage or you want to hold on cash in your lockers or in your cupboards or you want to keep it uh, kept away for a particular time, you tend to use the higher denomination notes and not the lower denomination notes. Uh, now, how does an economy decides on what denominations, banknotes, or coins you should have. Normally, they use the system of the power of two with the decimal principles. Uh, if you look at the decimal principles, it will lead to denomination like one, ten, hundred, thousands, and so on. Now, when it comes to the power of two, we normally consider minus one or plus one. So that would lead the Two to the uh, power of plus one would lead to denominations of two, twenty, two hundred, two thousands, etc. And to when you raise it to minus one, it will lead to denominations of five, fifty, five hundred, five thousand, fifty thousands accordingly. Now, how does it really materialize? Is something which I will explain. Now, when you try to do a transaction between, say, a denomination between one to nine. 1 to 9, uh, you have currencies of say 1, 2, and 5. Now, if you want to do an, uh, a transaction of 1, you just need one banknote of denomination 1. If you are doing for 2, you need one denomination of uh, banknote of 2. For 3, you can have one, one each of 1 and 2. 
for four you will have two of denomination two for five of course you have one of five accordingly if you see nine you can have one of five and two of two so if you take currencies of one two and five in that proportions you literally cover all your transactions very easily you don't need other denomination notes uh, to be um, in your portfolio in india the reserve bank controls the printing of bank notes and as on today they are allowed to print up to denominations of 10000 in case they decides to have banknotes more than 10000 then the rbi act 1934 has to be amended before they would do it the present denomination of banknotes in india are 1 to 5 10, 20, 50, 100, 200, 500, and the highest is 2000. So if you see here, you have the, the same equations of 1, 2, and 5. Again, 10, 20, and 50, 100, 200, and 500. So you use these denominations, which will help to cover all the transactions which an individual or an needs to do when you are doing a cash transactions this is what i wanted to explain to you about how denominations are worked out and what a denomination is now what i would like to do is i would like to show you the different denomination banknotes which are there in my collection to give you a overview of types of notes which has been printed over the years in various countries. I have categorized these into five different categories. The first one is fractional. Fractionals are those notes which are less than the denomination one. So if you have in India, anything less than one rupee, so any notes which are in paisas would be treated as fractional then would be the regular notes the ones which i explained to you are one two five ten twenty those would be categorized into the regular ones then you have odd denomination notes you have inflation notes which are from say hundred thousand to up to a million and hyperinflation which is one million and above uh, what I have included here is basically legal currency notes, which has been issued by various countries in several years. I have not considered the commemorative notes because those are very odd denominations, which been issued by various countries. Those are not covered in this presentation. Now, the bank notes from my collections of various denominations. <coughs> the fractions here you see it's 0 0.01 0 0.05 0 0.1 0 0 0.2 0 0.25 0 0.5 these were all if you see the decimal uh, 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 decimal depicted banknotes then you have the uh, uh, whole numbers which is 1, 2, 5, 6, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, 50, 55, 60, 65, 70, 75, 80, 85, 90, 95, 99. These are all less than the whole number one. These are now as actually depicted as fraction, which is quarter. 
and this is half. Uh, I have forgot to mention one uh, issue before. For each currency, there would be issued each denomination. Several countries may have issued of the same denominations, but I have typically taken only one for each denomination just to pictureize the type of currencies which have been issued by various countries. These are the regular banknotes, which is one, one rupee, which we had. The one previously, which I told you, was the fr fractions. Then you have two. This is from Brazil. This is five. This is from Austria. This is again 10. This is 20 from Israel. Again, 50 from India. 100 from Germany, 200, 500 from Vietnam, 1,000 from Kenya, 2,000, 5,000 from Peru. This is 10,000 from Hungary, 20,000 from Russia, 50,000 from Zambia. So again, you see in the regulars, it's 1, 2, and 5. Now the odd the odd denominations. You can see 1.5 marks from Germany, two and a half rupiah from Indonesia, then three pango from Hungary, then four pesos, 4.5 marks, 6.5 marks, seven dollars from US, Romania. This is eight. Sorry, this is Rome, Italy. This is 9, 15, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, 60, 75, 80, 90, 125, 150, 250, 300. 700, 3,000, 25,000, 30,000. Now these are mixed. So if you see, it is one as a total, but you have one, two, and 97, which becomes as one. Here again, five, 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 which totals to 20. This is 10, 20, and 30. Hellers. This is 95 plus 5. These are all mixed denominations. These are fixed currency denominations. These are basically German marks. This is again a fixed from Belgium. Now coming to the inflation banknotes. 100,000 from Romania, 200,000 marks, 250,000. This is 500,000. This is half a million, which is again 500,000, 750,000. Now coming to the hyperinflation. This is 1 million, 2 million, 3 million, 5 million, 10 million, 12 million, 20 million, 25 million, 35 million, 40 million, 50 million, 75 million, 100 million, 200 million, 250 million. 300 million, 500 million, 600 million. Now coming to milliardad. These are denominations which were issued in Germany, which is basically equivalent to the billions. So milliardad is actually, one milliardad is actually one billion. So this is one, this is two, 
This is 3, this is 5, this is 10, this is 15, this is 20, 25, 30, 50, 80, 100, 200, 500. Now, this is actually the billions. This is 3 billion. This is 10 billion. This is 25 billion. This is 50 billion. This is 100 billion. This is 500 billion. Now, the marks which were issued as billions in Germany are actually trillions. So this is one, this is two, this is three, this is five, this is 10, this is 20, 50. This is the trillions from Zimbabwe. This is 10, 20, 50, 100. These are the, this is the highest denomination banknotes which is ever issued, which is 10 raised to 19. This is the highest printed banknotes, which is 10 raised to 20, but was never issued. Now, these were various banknotes of different denomination, which are in my collection. There could be banknotes of other denominations issued, but which are not in my collection is not been shown here. This will give you an overview of various types of denominations which are there uh, in the, uh, the field of banknotes, which is issued by various countries over the period of time. <clears throat> the web series, which I was I'm mentioning to you earlier, we had the first series, which was from 14th May to 19th of September. And we had a viewership of totally 10,000 plus in that. This today presentation is part of the second series, which started on 28th of November and which will end on next Saturday. The third series, the date is not yet decided, but those will not be live webinars, but recorded presentations, which will be uploaded uh, in our channel. Each of those presentation would be for about five minutes and there would be one which will be uploaded every every day of the week other than Sunday. So you would have about six minimum six uploads every week. Uh, and we hope that we will continue that for around uh, 20 odd weeks. So this we, we are working on various interesting topics and the mod modalities which we would start in but uh, in a few weeks. Uh, the the six sections would be uh, the coins which would be uploaded on Monday on Tuesdays would be on stamps Wednesday would be on documents Thursday on autographs and personalities. Friday on collectibles and Saturday on banknotes. Uh, these are not live webinars and so would request everybody if you could subscribe to these channels of ours, which will help you to get updates on what is happening on these presentations. Thank you very much for attending these presentations. And now I would request all of you to ask any questions specifically if you have. Also, I have given you my email ad address here. In case you have any queries at a later date, you can always address to me at a particular time later on. Again, thank you for all to attending this presentation. These were uh, the gold series was issued by the German government. Uh, you know, the gold marks 
in in relation with the us dollars as a fixed currency and fennings is basically the fraction of the marks so as they were gold marks it became gold fennings Any more questions? I think uh, there are no more questions. And uh, I have as I've already given my email ad address earlier. If there is any questions with anybody else, please do uh, write to me and I will try to reply back to you. Also, please subscribe to the channel so that you will get the information about the future presentation which we would do. Uh, there would be various reasons for the fractional uh, banknotes. Yes, one would be expense, one could be ease of use. Also, the availability of uh, paper could be more easy in places rather than metal. So it could be various reasons for a lot of people to opt for uh, fractional uh, banknotes. Uh, at a particular time when the hyperinflation was there, when the thillions came out, uh, several thillions could not even perhaps get you a loaf of bread. For example, the, uh, the notes which I showed you from Hungary, which was the highest denomination bank notes, <coughs> with that particular one, which would be 10 raised to 20 pengos, that was the denomination of that banknote. You could not get a bus ticket. A local bus ticket could not be purchased with that one particular banknote. Basically, the high denomination notes are issued basically during the hyperinflation time. I think there's no more questions. I would like to thank all of you again to attending this presentation. And I hope I could give you a, a little information about the various denomination mic notes, which are there over the years, which has been printed by various government. Thank you very much again.